is done. Our work continues. So this final session um, is all about uh, overview and synthesis. Uh, and, and I'll do it on behalf of uh, John and myself. It's, it's, it's trying to, to hit the highlights of kind of where we're at in, in this discussion, in this development of a, of a national recreation agenda. It's, it's clear that there are at least uh, three main uh, sectors providing parks and recreation services in our communities. Uh, the private sector is burgeoning, it's growing, it's growing faster than the public sector, it's meeting lots of demand, it's healthy uh, in, in most communities. Uh, but it's not the kind of sector that is crying for a national agenda. It's responding to fleeting demands and trying to change it uh, every month uh, to, to be viable and, and profitable and to work with us. Uh, we also have the not-for-profit sector, which is uh, uh, sometimes struggling, sometimes strong, always uh, with their heart in the right place, trying to, to meet real needs, trying to focus on public goods, often acting in concert with and, and as an extension of the public sector, working in partnership with the public sector, as sometimes it's the private sector. And we have the public sector, um, also very active uh, and has received most of the, the discussion today, or the last two and a half days, is, is the role of municipal and, and provincial and federal governments and, and public institutions, the universities and colleges, and how we react to that not-for-profit sector and the private sector. And, and we really believe that some kind of national agenda is required because the problems we deal with, the needs in the communities we work in, are complex and complicated often. And they're also intersectoral and multi-jurisdictional. And so that's the need for some kind of a plan, some kind of a, an overview, some kind of an identification of roles is uh, what is the role of the federal government, the provincial governments, the regional governments, local governments, institutions? How do we relate to and find our relationship with uh, those other two sectors? And, and so we need some kind of an overview, some kind of a, a list of priorities, something to guide effort, something to focus resources, something to, on, on which we're going to study further and discuss and come up with coordinated and collaborative approaches, something that will help to drive uh, research and uh, innovation. And so we've, uh, we've been talking about all these things for the last two and a half days. And I think we've, we've begun to identify the issues and problems and disaggregate them and then try and put them back together, the, the analysis first and the synthesis later, as we've heard. Um, and we haven't finished that process, and, and we certainly haven't, uh, we, we on the Secretariat or Advisory Committee, certainly have not fully mined all of the 200 pages of workshop notes that are out there. And we certainly haven't had a chance to look at the most recent workshop, which is uh, some of the best stuff, I'm sure, and so uh, we think uh, we've got lots of work to do to, to, to mine that. Um, but we also think that while we never asked for or tested or sought uh, unanimity on any of these things, we do believe there is a, a, a growing consensus. A consensus maybe not on the entire package, not on everything, but a consensus on some of the things that are important, some of the things that need to galvanize us and help us to move forward. Some of the things that represent a renewal of the field. Some of the things we've got to be doing. And so I'm asking you um, to kind of uh, help me understand whether the things I'm about to, to talk about really do represent a consensus. And, and you won't be, you won't have time to, to test that much here now, but, but I'll give you some thoughts about how we're going to do it. Um, with, it, with this group and a broader group, just to see if we've really heard you right. But we've also got more work to do because we've just got a broad brush of what we think some of the 
consensus items are. And it's clear that it's a, a beginning, not an end. Uh, and we're asking you for a mandate to continue to move forward with this work and to refine it and to improve it as we go, to broaden the tent and involve more people in that discussion because as, as, uh, as so uh, clearly been pointed out, we can't represent the diverse constituencies from which we come. And, and, uh, and when we planned this, we, we realized that it was uh, a, a little too much to assume that in two and a half days we could we could do more than set the agenda, uh, which means the big work comes uh, in, is still ahead of us. But I'd like to just ask you, ladies and gentlemen, if we correctly heard um, what you've been saying, at least in very high level, broad terms. And so what I think you've said is we need a vision. And, and we haven't talked about a vision, and we haven't crafted a vision. Um, and and uh, you've also said words are really important, and we need to take time and get those words clear. Um, and, and, and so we need to do that. We need to craft a vision. And, and we don't know what that vision will exactly look like. But if we had crafted it, we think that some of the notions that are now up on the screen would be the kinds of notions that would go into a vision statement. Uh, a country where people are individually and collectively strong and vibrant uh, and have confidence and competencies and, and all wrapped up into a, a sense of health and well-being. And that uh, collectively they would have those things as in communities that they're, they're they're involved in either communities of geography or communities of interest. But that's the kind of vision we aspire to, the kind of vision we think we're an integral part of trying to pursue. And if I can just make the observation that I think some of the, the uh, plenary speakers that weren't from our field, that were from aligned, figure, uh, uh, aligned fields, did a superb job in articulating the kind of benefits we, we uh, strive to achieve, the kinds of things we bring to the table when we, when we work on those things, the health and well-being of Canadians, the health and well-being of Canadian communities, and, and the environment that, that sustains us. And, and so a vision is needed. We don't pretend we've got one now, but we've got some of the building blocks of a vision, some of, something we can put on a table and say, what do we need to add? What do we need to subtract? What do we need to change? Let's try and build this vision together. A number of you said that needs to be part of a document that comes out of this, and, and so we've got at least a place to start that. But, but again, we know that words are important, and, and we know that we've got a, a lot more work to do in that, and we'd love to solicit your help in doing that, uh, and that'll be part of my last message. In essence, we understand, and I think we've recommitted to, and re-identified and refocused on the business that we're in. Um, and, and in some respects, it's the business we've come from, as, as uh, John articulated this morning. Uh, we, we're, we're going back to our roots. That I heard in some of the, the work groups a lot of thought that we started in the needs meeting business, uh, in the health business, uh, uh, just as John suggested, right back to early days. Uh, and then we kind of went from there into the demand business and trying to respond to all things and be all things to all people and ask everybody, what do you want and let's give it to you because you say you want it. We chased the money. We decided to kind of get into the business of business. We decided that in the public sector we might be more demand driven. But here I think there was a lot of talk about focus and about coming back to our roots, about understanding that we're really in the citizen building business that we're really in the community building business, that we're really in the environmental um, protection and securing and understanding and appreciating business, that these three legs of the stool that we've always sat on, we've always understood were our core, are our core still, and, and represent the, a need to refocus and to go back to, and to create a promise that we can deliver on. We understand that more than ever, we're aligned and need to collaborate with and need to coordinate with a whole bunch of others. 
and they, that there's almost nothing we can do alone. That while we might be strong as our agencies of parks and recreation, that we, we, we will be successful through others. And in fact, the more that we can help others to achieve their agendas and their goals, the more relevant we will be and the more successful we will become. That we're really in the business of health and health care. We're really in the business of individual well-being and, and confidence and competence and, and feelings of welcomeness and inclusion. That we're really in the education business for people at all levels even though our public education systems only take people from a certain kind of uh, 5 to 18 slice, we, we deal with people at all levels of, of uh, ability and, and uh, all age ranges, and, and we really are in the education business. That we're really in the justice system business, and, and we're about creating safer communities and keeping kids off streets and reducing antisocial behavior. We're about uh, making communities more inclusive and cohesive and better places and safer places to walk at night. We're in the social services business. We, we, we heard how closely paralleled the notion of recreation is with, with uh, reduction in social problems and antisocial behavior. We heard that from people outside our field and from people inside our field. We're solutions based. We need to be more strategic. We need to understand that we're, we're part of a bigger whole and that we're not going to be arguing about sectors and, and uh, where, where we leave off and others begin. That we really are in the business of recreation and sport and fitness and arts and culture and active living and, and outdoor recreation and all of those other parts of who we are. And there aren't kind of ends of us and beginnings of them. Somebody said in one of the workshops, we can't be condescending and going and saying, um, come and help us achieve our objective. We've got to go in as equal partners if we're going to have real partnership. We also know now, at least I learned in this event, that we're in the wicked problem solving business. Uh, I thought we were in the citizenship building and, and the community building and environmental sustainability businesses, but we're really in the business of solving many, many wicked problems, and, and we've had those defined to us. We know we're part of something bigger. We know that the promise that we need to deliver on is a big part of something bigger than ourselves, something many of you have called the quality of life sector. We're, we require more solutions. We require more focus. We require a bit more commitment. We require a number of things that uh, we don't know quite what to call, but we're currently calling overarching issues or assumptions or tenets, things that will drive all of the, the items that will be on our agenda, whatever that agenda is. Uh, these might be values, they might, they might morph into a set of values or, or something else, and it's probably not inclusive, and, and I apologize for that, but, I, but as a place to start that, we've got uh, initially 10, of what we call the overarching kind of principles that will drive us, uh, that relate clearly to a renewed understanding and commitment to the business we're in. And the first, of course, is just the business we're in, the three pillars that support us and sustain us. We also need to, to have a very clear vision that we can be accountable to and, and, uh, and, and is relevant and, and will help us all to very clearly understand the, the direction that we're headed and the, the very significant role we have in, in getting there. We believe we need to be anchored in a renewed national recreation statement, but there's been many comments in the commission papers and in, in the uh, plenary addresses and in your workshops about how sustainable that, that, that document was, that while it was great in 87, much of it is still great, and the definition of recreation is still quoted, and the list of uh, roles and responsibilities it lays out are still uh, espoused to some degree. But what we need is a refreshing of that and an updating of that, and certainly the context within which it happens, and a re-understanding of some of those roles, and a recommitment to some of those roles, and the addition of the, the, the burgeoning um, uh, independence of and, and uh, 
a sophistication of municipal level of government, uh, which is no longer just the children of provincial governments uh, and take only direction from them. So, so we, we know we've got to, to, to revisit and, and understand that national recreation statement a little better. Um, and, and that's part of what, what has to happen. It isn't necessarily a strategic direction we're going in, but we're calling it right now an overarching piece that needs to be done to help kind of drive effort. We also know that we need to become less focused on reacting to all the demands in our community and competing with the private sector in that respect and, and going after the revenue uh, and serving mostly uh, middle and upper class Canadians and responding only to demand and saying uh, we're in the business of asking people what they want and giving them what they want because they say they want it. And we need to be not just focused on those direct benefits to users like the private sector is, we need to be understanding that indirect benefit to all. And we've had many examples of, of uh, and been reminded back to our benefits uh, base and our, our roots and uh, about how important that is, that we need to be needs driven, not demand driven. We need to be focusing on those places where need is greatest. We've got to be more strategic in that respect. And that while some might say, gee, that's going to be harder to gain constituency, to gain relevancy, uh, we don't need to give up a lot of what we're doing. We just need to, to refocus some. It's not an either or thing. It's a rebalancing of investment. It's a rebalancing of investment to say, what is the public sector ideally positioned to do? And how can we uh, work with the not-for-profit and private sector and focus where need is greatest and build community and citizenship where other sectors aren't doing it or where collectively we can do it better. We need to put less emphasis on trying to predict our future and, and then respond to it and, and a bit more emphasis on creating an ideal future and positioning ourselves to be resilient and flexible and be able to respond to whatever the future holds. Sherry and Trevor and Graham told us more about how we need to be so strategic and uh, Ruben Nelson has written a whole paper on, on how we need to re reposition ourselves and, 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 re and rely less on, on trying to predict some elusive future that's going to change before we get there and focus instead on, on building the kind of future we need. We have on our list of overriding principles, ways of doing business, if you will. We need to foster evidence-based research. And there's a lot of it out there, and much of it's now being done by allied fields and other people, and we heard a lot about that uh, in some of the plenary addresses. An amazing amount of information we can take and use. But we need to do more, and it needs to focus in our core areas. Needs meeting and our role in meeting needs. We need to adopt explicit processes for continuous improvement. We've got an excellent model in Alberta that's emerging, the service excellence model, that talks about a continuous, regularized process of evaluating how an organization is advancing and making progress in meeting needs in a community and how we can, we can document that progress in, in a very uh, systematic and, and, and formalized way to show progress. We know we need to be more accountable and, and, and in our measurement system. Performance measures will be where it's at. But we've heard how vital it is to make sure we're measuring the right thing. Because one of the rules of management is that what you measure, you get better in. So let's not be counting noses and understanding how many people we're serving and how much revenue we're generating. Let's not, let's shift from output measures to outcome measures. Measures that tie our activity to the goal that, that triggered it and justified it initially. Let's measure that kind of progress, whether we're really making change, whether we're really focusing on positions, as John talked about, whether, as Christian talked about, we're really making a difference uh, in, in terms of, of, of what we're doing. We need to focus more on citizens than customers. We can't ignore customers. We've always had a good focus on them. We'll continue to provide excellent service to customers. We'll continue to deliver direct benefits to users. 
but we must always have a mind on non-users or, or infrequent users, people who are paying to help subsidize service that they're not directly benefiting from. This notion of indirect benefit, which is the definition of public good, needs to be top of mind in all we do. I heard a number of you discussing that in work groups and, and articulating it better than, than I can today, but, but it's, an, it's an important piece, an important cornerstone of everything we need to be about is, is making subtle shifts, not thinking about um, uh, dropping something completely and adopting something else, but just refocusing, rebalancing, recommitting to some of the things that are most important. We know as we move forward we have to be very careful about the words that we use. And we know that we're, we, we need to be involved in a whole lot of other things. We need to be involved in indices of well-being in our measurement system. We need to be demonstrating to non-users how relevant we are. We need to be measuring things that they'll find compelling. And all of those things need to drive whatever is on our agenda. And I don't think we have a complete list of agenda items just yet. But we do have currently about nine, or uh, and, and if we've been able to listen to more of our workshop uh, discussions this morning or review the notes from them, we might have 10 or 12 or 15 on this list. But we know we've got some candidates for items that will need to be on a national agenda, or at least I think we do. And these, in no particular order, uh, uh, include some of some some things like we need to lead and be part of and be a, a very important uh, partner in the whole after-school agenda, uh, because uh, we know now that that's when all of the bad happens between three to six on weekdays. And, uh, we also need to reprioritize unstructured play, the value of unstructured play at the core of our business, fun for the sake of fun. I really encourage you, if you haven't uh, watched um, Carl Honoré's 45-minute uh, video, uh, to, to, to uh, supplement your understanding of what he said here on Sunday night with, with a viewing of that video about the tremendous value, about how kids involved in unsupervised, unstructured, informal play grow up to be more productive, well-rounded citizens. We know that's part of our, our, our roots, and we, we recommit to it through this agenda. We know, we know we need to incorporate na nature into our neighborhoods, and that doesn't mean we abandon people leaving neighborhoods to go to nature, but we need to make sure we're part of urban design, that we're part of building the kind of neighborhoods that are friendly and walkable and safe and, and, uh, and pretty and, and feel comfortable. And we've heard the compelling evidence about how much impact that has on people growing up in neighborhoods with and without access to neighborhood. That, that amazing slide um, that, that Richard Lou showed us about those, those, uh, those neighborhoods and, and uh, Sorry, it was Sherry that showed us the, the slide about those those different blocks, one with trees and one without, and how the difference in the health of people they, they, as they grew up in those different kinds of housing developments. We need to make sure that healthy choices are the easiest choices, the most convenient choices, the cheapest choices. We need to be about social inclusion. We've got to find ways of involving people who aren't involved now, and that's got to be in making settings there they live and work and play in to be much easier to live and work and play in and to make the kinds of choices we know will allow them to grow up to be healthier and more productive citizens. We need to live equity and access and social inclusion in everything we do. We've got to be focused on that. We've got to make that a top priority. We've got to understand that as we refocus on needs, and those most vulnerable and those in most need, we've got to involve them in the planning and we've got to make sure that they get access. And, and we believe that that will it, it actually translate into more relevance. And those people who are paying for that service and wondering what direct benefit they're getting, we're going to be able to make that message to them. And if we don't give them that message properly, others around us will, the people in the health and education and justice system will. 
We need to be seen as a major contributor to major and physical health of Canadians. That goes without saying. It's got to be on our agenda. We've got to make sure that we're part of the new health uh, agreement that's going to be negotiated in the next few years. We've got this awful disconnect in health and social services where, where uh, health and social services are mandated to be a provincial responsibility and are funded by provincial and territorial governments. And yet we at the local level, puppets on a shoestring, are delivering the solution to a problem that isn't ours, it's somebody else's. And how do you go to your local council and say, we can increase health and we can reduce social problems, and they'll say, yeah, but what's the benefit in it? You're just helping the provincial government with their mandate, their budget. We've got to find a way of, of reconciling those problems. We've got to foster volunteerism. It's in trouble. We've got to re-remember that volunteering is the highest form of recreation. We've got to re-understand what drives volunteers and meet those needs in, because that's valuable in and of itself, regardless of, of the extra benefit they give to the community by volunteering. That they become better citizens through that volunteerism, no matter what their age, six or 60. We've got to help people to, to uh, recommit to volunteering, even if it's in a different format and in, in shorter chunks and for particular projects rather than for years at a time. And that's got to be on our agenda because we've got to turn around the trend in this country towards reduced volunteerism. We also have to reinvest in our aging and inadequate infrastructure. We know that we have, uh, at a very minimum, a $15 billion shortfall. Uh, too many of our facilities are in the last quarter of their functional lifespan. And if we were to reinvest in them, they might still meet yesterday's needs instead of today's or tomorrow's. We've got a huge hill to climb there. We've got to look at how resources can be garnered and what portion of those resources we can, we can apply and how those can be best utilized, best that's translated into bricks and mortar that meet future needs, not past needs. All of these things are on our agenda. And another thing that's on our agenda, I'm not quite sure if it's an agenda item or if it's an overarching principle or what it is, but we've got to broaden the tent in many ways. We've got to understand that we collectively, 200 thought leaders in the country, can't represent all the constituents we come from. Uh, and we don't. And we've got to involve those constituents in the planning and the understanding of priorities and, and, and to be responsive to their needs, we've got to involve them. But we also need to broaden the tent in terms of jurisdictions and, and sectors. We've got to work with these other partners. We can't be insular. The, the pup tent that we heard from one speaker has got to be made into a great big circus tent. That's critical to our success. And there's a whole bunch of other things that maybe could be or should be on our list of national agenda items that right now only has nine items on it and ten, ten items of overarching kind of principle. And, and I don't know what they all are and, and this list will, will grow, but there's a bunch of additional pieces on it that have been mentioned several times in several workshops and need to be more clearly articulated. And we'll mine those 200 pages more carefully, as well as all the pages that have been created this morning. And, and we'll try and understand that better as we put our documents together. But we know that there are some things, including our, our national information sharing and database systems to, to get that. This, this event was a remarkable success story in terms of how you can use LIN to share information deal with relevant data. We need to update, update the preparation of our practitioners, um, which involves uh, recruiting and uh, educating and uh, training and mentoring uh, uh, to make sure that we've got the right practitioners for tomorrow, to make sure that the skills relevant for tomorrow are, are, are in the hands of the people delivering the services. We've got to take some of the stuff that on Rick's are on Rick Gilbert's uh, edges and bring them into the core. I think that was evident as, as he talked about some of those items around the edges. I think almost everybody in the room I was seeing not, nodding when he talked about some of the things on the edges need to be brought into the core. Uh, perhaps not all, but some of them.
We need to design neighborhoods around recreation, as Richard uh, talked about. We need to use allied fields to help market, sell, make our case, interpret our objectives, uh, garner more resources. We need to be proactive about climate change. Early actions. Again, I don't know what all of those are, but we know that there are some things we're going to have to go away and we're going to have to really start get working on very quickly because opportunity is at hand or because they're just so darn important. Important, we've got to start wrestling with some of these things. Uh, we know that uh, we need to be part of a renewed national sport uh, policy, uh, the health agreement, uh, and, and a new national recreation statement. We know there are a whole bunch of tables we've got to be at. And as we go to those tables, we've got to be clear about our role, our mandate, our strength, what we bring to the table in those kinds of things. The delivery systems we have, our connections to the communities, our customer service expertise, our, our, our locally uh, neighborhood groups. And we need to show them how those assets are important at those tables and those policy discussions. We've got to resolve the kind of jurisdictional issues that I mentioned before about the responsibility for doing something at one level of government, but all of the tools to resolve and cost-effectively solve some of those problems at a different level of government. Uh, what, who could have designed something more dysfunctional? How can, we, how can we put those things together so they make much more sense to better serve Canadians and Canadian communities? We've got to focus less on the science of proving some of the benefits we know are true and, and do what John called create the, the conceptualization nexus, the understanding whether it's true or not that we're good. And then we can always prove how good we are once we, we uh, get the chance to demonstrate that. We need to be building that, uh, that, that conceptual nexus. We need also to chart a course forward from this event, and I'll talk more about that in just a moment. We need to uh, determine all the steps that come next, and I'd love to have spent the whole time in, with both groups that were dealing with that topic and understand that. And rest assured, those that were in those two groups will be looking at those immediately after uh, the microphones get turned off at this event. We need to broaden the tent. That's an early kind of priority. Some of the, the early actions will be how do we share this more broadly, some of this stuff. We need to perhaps uh, also um, deal with some of the uh, we need to be part of the renewed national sport policy. Uh, nope, we've got all that done. We need to focus on uh, meeting the highest priority needs. Not sure where that is in that depth, uh, Christopher. Uh, back a little bit. Uh, we need to in, uh, focus on meeting the highest priority needs with demonstrable uh, results. Um, sorry. Might not be on there. So, uh, and we need finally in our. Uh, so under next steps, one one last thing, or under early actions, one last thing, and that is we need to use some of the models we've got here. The models that were presented. There were some really compelling, easy conceptual models that make sense. Uh, we had a great model from uh, Mark uh, Anielski that, that I don't have up here actually um, about. Uh, some, some of those great relationships. And then we've got models about, uh, so we've got a resiliency model, we've got a, um, a, a, a model about uh, poverty, um, and, and we've got uh, a model about uh, how we can be involved in, in health and, and community building. So we've got a whole bunch of these, these great models that we need to take a look at and pick and choose from, including Rick Gilbert's model and a, and a bunch of others. There are wonder, a lot of really good conceptual tools we can use to help deliver some of these, me these, uh, these messages and understand some of, of, of all that, the other words that I just got over and, and, and be able to articulate them more clearly. And so that's our beginning. We always said it would be a, a beginning rather than an end. And so, in terms of next steps, 
Um, we've got our, our work cut out for us. And I would suggest to you we've all got our work cut out for us. That I'm hoping that every one of you can take something away and can actually start working on it tomorrow. But there's also a lot of collective work to be done and collective effort that needs to happen. So we're going to prepare a version of this presentation and we're going to have it um, in your inbox or on the website. It'll actually, sorry, it'll be on the, the Lynn website um, very quickly, within hours. You can read it on the plane on the way home, some of you from Calgary. Um, and, and we need your reaction to it. And, and, and what we'd like to do is frame your reaction to this first cut at the kinds of candidates that need to be included in a national recreation agenda and we want you just to answer three questions. What's missing and needs to be added? What on there do you believe should be deleted? And what's on there but needs to be changed in some respect? So if you could respond with an add, modify, delete email uh, or a, a comment uh, back to the ARPA office to start with, we as a secretariat will be looking for that, but we need it quickly. We want this document to start to share, and we're not going to share it the way it is yet until you get a chance to look at it. You haven't had a chance to even say if this makes sense yet. And so in our spirit of collaboration, something we wanted to model all the way through the event, we need a final bit of work from you in helping with this bit of, of uh, agenda that we're trying to build. And so we're going to ask you within a week, within seven days, Try and give us some comment while it's fresh in your mind. What were you talking about that isn't on here that really needs to be added? And we'll consider that and go back through all the notes. And, uh, and, and what on here needs to be deleted and what needs to be reframed. And then we're going to start to distribute some of this stuff. And we've got three potential deliverables. And the uh, Secretariat has agreed to continue working and the National Advisory Committee has agreed to continue working through a process of trying to determine next steps and who we can hand the ball off to and start to parcel out things and say, when can we have this document ready for that event and to be sitting at that table for that agenda. And we're hoping all of you will be part of that. And some of it will be done at, on your own initiative, in your own view, uh, just because you were here uh, without consulting with anybody else. And others of you will be part of a provincial organization that might take something to a provincial table and discuss it and, and further it through a provincial resolution or policy or initiative or, or, or new program. And some of you will be part of a, of a higher level effort, a more collective national effort to try and put some things in front of uh, ISRC and the Ministers of Health and, and uh, a, 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 an update of the national sport policy and some of those kinds of things. But the three uh, uh, deliverables we've currently identified are this little document that I'm talking about now, which includes these 20 slides or so, but turned into a Word document with some, so the bullets turned into sentences, and, and we've got to somebody helping us, uh, Cheryl McAfee, who's a wizard at that. And, and put that on the website uh, within hours. And, uh, and then we're going to try and improve that and then just start distributing that uh, once we've, we've considered all your input, but give it to us in the next week. The second report will be a, a kind of a, 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 an event report, a summit report, uh, will almost be written in the form of some kind of a, a, a policy ask of the deputy ministers early next year uh, when the uh, uh, ISRC and deputy ministers all, all collaborate to talk about uh, some of the things they've got on their plate, uh, including after school agenda and other things. And, and we need to take some of these pieces and say which three or which two or which five or which one are we going to take forward in that vein, uh, which pieces of the report get turned into an ask. And, and then we're going to produce a proceedings document, uh, something that includes all of the stuff. Now, I don't think we're going to, going to include the verbatim transcript of all of the workshop notes, but we're going to include the gist of, of, of all that you've said in some way, shape, or form out of respect for your taking the time to provide it. We need to, to make sure we honor that, and, and we'll do that. But, but I, we just don't know what that looks like yet. And that might take us longer, and it's a bigger document, and we'll put it together, and everything will be available on the web. Okay? 
So that's where we're at. My final slide is just a great big thank you to the uh, last 65 hours of your time and the hours you put in reading the papers before you got here and, and thinking about and preparing for this event and all the time you're going to put in making this thing sing, making this thing work, helping to implement and helping to refine and then implement a lot of the initiatives we talked about today.